some people live in Outlook. It's their headquarters for their day. They, they use it to almost its full capacity. Other folks just go in there, answer a few emails, maybe do a meeting. We're going to show you some time savers I think both sets of folks could use. I mean, if you save a few moments every hour, that adds up to minutes a day and you know, more than that over the weeks and months. So we want to add some time savers. These are the ones that uh, we find that resonate with people that even folks here in the office, you show them, they go, wow, I didn't know that. So hopefully there's a couple aha moments you can use here with Outlook. So um, I'm going to, um, uh, the, the first one we're going to talk about is turn off notifications. Now, um, I am uh, i don't live in Outlook, and I want to get my work done, and I, I, even though my manager may be listening, I think of my work and I think of my email as two separate things. So I want to make sure I can see my email when I want to and not have those little pop-ups occur from time to time. I'm going to open up Outlook 2013 here. and Those pop-ups you see, they at the bottom of your screen if you have a uh, Windows 7 or at the top of your screen. They come up like a little piece of toast almost. And it's like Pavlov's dogs, if you remember that um, adage, that, that the axiom is that basically you start looking at things and doing things uh, without even thinking about it. So that you, you're working hard and this little pop-up occurs for some simple little email you've never even heard about and suddenly you're thinking about that instead of what you're working on. So I like turning those notifications off. I'm going to go down here to the bottom right hand side of my screen in Windows and click on this little triangle, left click, and look for the icon here and right click it and you can see there's a, a checkbox by show new mail desktop alert. I'm going to turn that off. I don't want to see those emails at all. You can also do that in Outlook. Let me show you that how to do that. If you go over to Outlook to the left-hand side, hit File, and go to Options. Under Mail, there's a whole bunch of things here. There's Play a Sound. There's Show an Envelope icon in the taskbar. There's a whole bunch of stuff here that, quite frankly, you I don't think you need. I mean, I did this to a group I managed one time. I said, go ahead and turn off all your notifications. If I need you, I'll get off out of my seat and walk over to your desk. Try it for a week and see what find, see what happens. Well, I got fired. No, 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 I didn't get fired. Nothing happened. Uh, but most people kept them off because they allowed them to get that work, those fresh, precious few minutes to get done without the email. So that's our first one is turn off notifications. The uh, next one we're going to talk about is uh, dragging email in the calendar. Now, most people know, and if you don't, I'm going to give you a bonus right now. If you're on an email that you want to turn into a meeting, you can go up here into the ribbon and click on Reply with Meeting. And basically, it takes everyone that in the, is in the email chain into the To column, and you can add all your uh, text here in the uh, area for the email here. You can add your own text down here if you need to also. But if you sometimes what you want to do is set an appointment. You want to block some time off. Let's say I have this proposal here that I need to read, but I want to just take some calendar time so I have private time to, to work on that. So I can just drag this into the word here, the word calendar or the icon, and it creates an appointment for me, and I can just fill this out. If you have an earlier version of Outlook, there actually might have a calendar you can actually pull down to the day and then set the time. Um, so that way you can block off time and, and this will appear as an appointment in your calendar. Uh, a couple little things that are kind of fun in Outlook when setting time and date and all that. Over here in time, uh, you, can, you don't have to use the number, colon, number, a, and p.m. You can just write the time. So if I want to do this at, um, I don't know, 10 o'clock this morning, I can just write 10 and it prints it out. Uh, puts it in. You can also do military time. So if I want to do this at 315, that's 1515. It puts it in as 3.15, and I can even end it on an odd time. So let's say I'm going to do a 10-minute meeting. When was the last time you were there? Or a 10-minute appointment. I'm going to go uh, 15.25, type that in, hit tab, and it will go in. A couple of, so you can do some of that stuff in, the, uh, in Outlook to set your time. You don't have to go to the, you know, type exactly what's there. Next thing we're going to talk about is the ignore button. So let's find an email. We get these emails all the time. This one's about a client lunch that was in April. Now it's tomorrow. It's been rescheduled. I can't go to it. Everyone's having all this stuff. What should we have? They're talking about all this great food. I can't go. So I delete the message every time it comes in because it bothers me. Well, what I can do is use the ignore button up here in the upper left-hand corner. If there's an email you don't want to see anymore, this ignore button, which is control delete is the shortcut, not only does it delete the email, any more emails about that subject go automatically into your deleted items folder. You don't even see them. 
So if you're getting some, there's some technical thing that doesn't deal with your, um, uh, your department, uh, you can put that in the ignore button. Or do we still have those ones where everyone says, you know, reply all, stop hitting reply all, and they, they hit reply all and it just goes on forever? Save your sanity. Go over here, click the ignore button. Uh, you, you get this message here for the first time. I'm going to check this off so I don't see this message again. I ignore the conversation. I never see those emails again. I don't have to think about the client lunch. The ignore button, terrific to use. We're going to stay in the upper left-hand corner here. At the very top, is the. this is called the Quick Access Toolbar. You see a few commands up here. The Quick Access Toolbar is for all, you can see these for all different uh, uh, programs in Office, Word, Excel, PowerPoint. Basically, you can put some of your most used or favorite commands up here at the top. Currently, I have undo, and there's some touch things here. I have a redo button, but you can add new commands there. There's a little triangle right next to it. Let me click on that. And so let me add the print command if I want to print email. There it is. And those will stay up there the entire time I'm there until I remove them. So the, they're always appear no matter what screen you're on. You can add a lot more. Let me show you here. Let me click this uh, little triangle again. Go down here to more commands. I'll click that. Lots of commands here. There's even a whole area of commands not in the ribbon. I mean, there's a ton of things here. I'm going to click all commands, which is everything in alphabetical order. Let me drop to the very bottom here, and I want to add one called Work Offline. I'll hit the Add button. I can rearrange this if I don't want to, but I'm good, so I'm going to hit OK. And now, as you can see in the upper left-hand corner, that Print command and that Work Offline command was up there and will stay up there. Work Offline is a great button. Um, if you want to stay in, in Outlook but don't want to send out any email, you want to send it all at once, or don't want to have any email come in to bother you, you can see there's a certain theme here I have about email. You can click that button and you work offline. You just get disconnected from the server, and then as soon as you click it back on, your email will send and receive. So that's a, a good button. That's why I keep it up in the Quick Access Toolbar. And again, that's on all Office programs. I think it's on all Office programs. I know it's on the main ones, Word, Excel, PowerPoint. It's on Visio. It's on all of them. Uh, the great tool to use. Sometimes we work in, in, in email time. And did you get that email? I had a support email. Did you get it? Sometimes you want to respond to people faster than email. And you can do that. You can respond with an I am. Click I am, reply all. And everyone in the message, I can now I am now. This only works if your business is connected with Link. If you have home, uh, if you work from office from home and have Skype, that, that they have a Skype network, it, will, it could do that with Skype also. But it, basically, you can get everyone at once. And then just reply, like, you know, I need an answer. You know, you can pretend you're the big boss. I need an answer now. And you can do this in I am, and they will um, they'll get the message, and, and you can work on it right there. So you don't have to, you know, there's walking out and getting people right away. There's email. This way you can respond to people as long as they're online right away and get a hold of them. So that's reply with I am, number five. Number six is Quick Steps. That's this big area of the ribbon right here, which you may have seen. I think it's been there since Outlook 2010. Um, but it's terrific, and I'm going to show you a couple different ways. Sometimes you do things manually. You move things to folders. You tag them. You categorize them. Some people set up rules. If, it, if, if the email does this, then we'll have all this happen. Quick Steps is a way to do that manual with email and a lot more. So if there's a certain email here that I want to use and and put it in, like, say, oh, this, this Bing email I got this morning would be perfect uh, for something we were working on with this Project Falcon. So what I can do up here is I can click this, the one I've preset in the Quick Steps area called Project Fountain, and I'll click it. Now, what it just did, I'll go over to this inbox now for uh, Falcon Project. It moved it over here, but not only that, it moved the message, it marked it as red. I now have it tagged this tailspin, and I have a follow-up flag. It did it all in one quick step. Let me break that open and show you how we did that here. So I'm going to go down and click the more steps and manage quick steps. And here's that Project Falcon. It moved it, it flagged it, it categorized it, it marked it as red. Now you can do this for a lot of emails. In fact, let's just kind of start a new one. I'm going to hit the Create New button here and just show you all the things you can do, all the actions you can add, and multiple actions. Move to folders. You can categorize a message two or three times if you want to. If you need to mark something here, let me choose one category here and then add another action and choose a category. Um, you know, I'll use two of them. So if I do this quick step, 
it will categorize those mails two ways. I can add other steps too. I can add categories and tasks. I can add flags. I can set the importance level of a message. I can copy it automatically. I can do, again, multiple steps as one quick step. I can also respond and make new email. This is really great. If you've ever used or tried to use sometimes Outlook templates, those can be tricky. Here's a new way to do it. Let me show you what I did for a Tailspin invoice. And what I did was I created a mail that when I click it, it automatically pre-populates. A lot of times we use the same email. We try to find it and we cut and paste and use it again. This way it creates a brand new email and I've set several things here. I can set the importance level as high. I can add a follow-up flag. I can preset who it's going to. And then the subject line, I just have to fill in what week it is. And then this whole other area, I just fill in the number, the date, and the amount and send it off. It's just a quick little snapshot of each week for the invoices we sent. So that's a quick step and you can set that email very easily. Uh, give it a try. Try create new and just start right in. If you wanted to do that new email, it's right here. You click new message and you, here's all the options you can do. And you can preset an email that you might use over and over again and use it as a quick step. That was um, our uh, time saver number six. Number seven is out of office. Um, now things are changed if you have smartphones and the Outlook web, acts, um, uh, web access and things like that, the web app. You can set your out of office message a couple different ways. But if you don't have that, or what I did a few years ago was you have this to-do list of things you wanted to do. And the last thing is I have to set my out, out of office message. And I remember a few years ago, I was at the bus stop and realized I had not said it. I had to come back in, missed my bus, went upstairs, all the jokes, hey, Doug, that was a short vacation, wait for my computer to fire up and set my out of office message and then leave. So the great thing about this is a new feature in Outlook 2013. I'm going to go over the file menu and click Office re out, um, automatic replies out of office. And I get this uh, little more expanded menu. I can send automatic replies. And then I check the box, only send during this time range. So I'm going on vacation next week. I'm not really. But if I was, I could set the message right here. So I'm going to set this message to go off Sunday night at about uh, 9 o'clock. Then I'm on vacation. And then I'll turn it back on the next Sunday late at night, 8 o'clock. So I can set this, and I'll, I'll add my type. In fact, it keeps my type from the last time I was on vacation in February, so I can just retype the dates if I want to. I can do one for inside and outside my organization if I want different messages, and then hit OK. And now that message will send on the 18th. I don't have to think about it. So that's a, it's a way of thinking of vacation in advance. That's always a good thing. Uh, our last tip is simple search. We could probably do 15 minutes on search. In fact, we probably should. But searching an email is a great way to find things. The search box is actually right in here uh, with all my email. Right above there, there's a little field called Search Current Mailbox. Control-E is the shortcut. And you can just search for something. So if I'm looking for something from uh, Garrett, I can type that in there. Now, five messages appear. Uh, he's only in the two line in one of these messages, and you can see it's yellow. But these other messages probably mention Garrett because it looks at the message, the subject, and all the information in the message. In fact, this top message here, if I scroll down, sure enough, Garrett is mentioned. It's a but about Yammer activity, and Garrett's name is there. So it picks up that information. Now, when you click up here, you get a whole ribbon of search tools. And let me um, close this. Let's do another search. Let's say I want to alert, search for something about uh, Contoso. And it will look for it. And as you can see, when you click the search, you get this new ribbon with all these tools up front. Now, you can also search the current mailbox or all mailboxes if you want to. The default is current mailbox. And then you can also use the ribbon. So if uh, I want to look for something with Contoso, but I want to look for something that has attachments. Now I can type all that in or I can just use the ribbon. And there it is. Now this message from Alex has nothing about Contoso. I don't see the word Contoso, but it has an attachment. I'll click on the attachment. I can read it. That's a feature in Outlook 2013. I can read it without opening up Word. And it's not going to be in yellow, but sure enough, the word Contoso is there. So it searched for an attachment to an email and I was able to find it. That's part of the power of search that is great. Um, one last a bonus. Uh, time saver for you if you're looking for help 
anytime. Look on the upper right hand corner of your screen, you see a question mark, or from many Office programs, uh, Microsoft programs in general, just click F1 and you get help. You get help online or offline, you'll get more online. So if there's something you want to search for, like um, what was that button Doug talked about? I want to make sure I remember that. That work offline button. I'll search for it and right here at the top it tells me I can find that command is under send and receive preferences. So I can go over here to send and receive and there's that work offline button without even putting in the quick access toolbar if I need to find stuff. So F1, that question mark in the upper right hand corner can get you connected to help. That's um, all the time we have for today. We'll have all of these time savers listed in the next hour at our blog post, aka.ms slash Outlook 8. The video will be there by the end of the week. You can go to aka.ms slash OffWeb to see previous webinars, the next few weeks we've announced, and also we have a, another advanced registration for the Outlook webinar, aka.ms slash Out123, if you want to come back for the next Outlook one. But we have plenty of stuff other there, more help and how to uh, help for you every Tuesday for the Office 15-minute webinar. Next week, working with diagrams with Visio with uh, Steve and Dave, we're going to give you two hosts because Visio is that cool. We need two people to wrap around the coolness. But for today's Office webinar team, Thank you for joining today's Office 15-Minute Webinar.